off for Robert E. Lee is Taylor Matlock. Back deep, and this guy here is Chris Burke. He's a receiver, one of the top receivers in Texas, and Jeremy Hernandez, very high pooch kick that Mesquite will field at their 28-yard line, break a tackle at the 35, and he has turned the corner at the 40, at the midfield, Lee 45, 40, at the Lee 30, inside the Lee 30-yard line, and not the start you want. Greg Green, the junior, took a pooch kick and just turned the corner 43 yard return and Darius Porter may have saved a touchdown the Skeeters will start at the lead 29 here is their offense Kelly Page the quarterback tackle to tackle Jeff Gwynn Richard Rice Matt Clayton the center Anthony Luna the guard and Solomon Orr 330 pound right tackle Chris Burke Xavius Robbins Trevon Stewart and Brian McGee the receivers a four receiver set the spread with Ronald King the tailback in the in the uh, shot, shotgun formation. Mesquite at the lead 29, they run the quarterback option. Page to the outside and King run out of bounds for a loss of a couple of yards. Nice job by Robert E. Lee's Colby Ray, who's really stepped up in recent weeks, playing his best football of the year for Lee up front. Colby Ray and Roderick Brown the ends. The tackle is Jacoby McKenzie. Linebackers in the middle, Michael Wall and George Faber. Bandit is Matt Uzel. The rover is Michael Hunter. Cornerbacks are Adrian Beard, Quet Nicholson with Tim Hyder, and Jeremy Moore, the safeties. Excuse me, Jeremy Moore and Takari in Cuba. Paid sideline pass, incomplete. Here comes a penalty flag. Justin Hansen, who came in with a start tonight, excuse me, ran over the receiver. Chris Burke at about the 25-yard line, so instead of third and 12, it's a first down, and Mesquite will have the ball inside the lead 30-yard line, and a penalty, a long, long return to the penalty, not a good start. No, not at all, and of course, a 43-yarder stuck right back down their end of the field against Robert E. Lee, and then the interference call coming up against Lee, too. Two bad things they can't allow to have happen, and they're happening tonight so far. So first down. For Mesquite, they will have the ball at about the 28-yard line. It's only a four-yard penalty, if that much. A three-yard penalty on a pass interference as they tried to find Burke. Listen to this. Chris Burke has 33 catches, 488 yards, and three touchdowns. A 5'10", 152-pound junior. Had seven catches for 94 yards in their game last week against Mesquite Horn. King lost two. Pass interference against Robert E. Lee. First and 10 Skeeters at the Lee 28-yard line. We're 28 seconds into this game. This time they go into a shotgun spread with two or two backs next to Page. Page runs the option, goes outside, has the ball at the 25, and knocked down at the Lee 23, a gain of about six or seven. Tim Hyder was there to clean him up, but he went untouched until he got inside the Lee 25 to the 23. Well, Lee's defense is slow to react, David, as they are unable to buy it on the actual fake up the middle. They do so up the middle, and Page does a great job of running outside and picking up a nice uh, gain on first down. Second down and six, second down and four as he got six yards down to the Lee 23-yard line. Big Solomon Orr, the 6'6", 330-pound senior. Right tackle made the key block for the Skeeters. Spread formation, King right there, Uzel threatens the blitz now Faber comes up the middle and they force the pitch and King turns the corner 25 20 15 inside the 15 close to the 10 to carry and Cuba makes the stop and he gets down to the lead 10 yard line and a gain of 14 yards and a first down for Mesquite it's first and goal at the lead 10 and what you want to have is a good quarterback that can run the option Kelly Page does a great job of pulling ball outside and forcing the defense in to come at him. Then he makes a pitch at the last second. A great job for the Mesquite quarterback, Page. Timeout on the field. The referee tonight, by the way, is Eddie Eberhardt. Ten goal at the lead 10. Shotgun spread, Page with two running backs right next to him. Gamblin and King 
They run the pitch wide. Gambling at the 15. Cuts inside the 10. Near the goal line, a broken tackle. He gets down to the 3. They had him at about the 10. He escaped the tackle. Matt Uzel with a stop for Robert E. Lee, but again down to the lead. 3-yard line on 2nd down and 3. We'll give credit to Rod Brown for forcing the quarterback to make the pitch sooner than he wanted to as he wanted to carry the option a little out further out to the far side of the field. He was unable to do so, and credit Rod Brown to turn the play back inside and leave there to make the stop. So they will rest the ball just inside the Lee four-yard line. Shotgun spread. Second and goal. Page. King. Page keeps near the goal line. Makes a man miss and scores easily. Wow, that was very easy. He made to carry and Cuba take the wrong guy. Made a little pitch move, and Kelly Page and Mesquite Two minutes and two seconds into this game, they lead six to nothing. And Lee's going to have to really watch this nice option offense by Mesquite. Page is only a sophomore, David, but he can really run it to perfection, and he does so in three or four consecutive plays to get Mesquite in the end zone. It is easy to run it, though, when you're not having anybody in your face until you get to the line of scrimmage. And right now, Lee's going to have to make some adjustments. Extra point by Carpio is good. He's 13 of... 14 this year, and he nails that one. 9.58 first quarter, Mesquite 7, Lee nothing. Back in one minute on News Talk 600, KTBB. Well, Mike Owens and his coaching staff hoping that his team would show a little fire early in this game, and they still have plenty of time to do it. The problem, though, is in the first two minutes of this game, they already trail 7 nothing, and that was just, quite frankly, Randy, way too easy. Well, yeah, the excellent kickoff return of 43 yards set it all up, and then the Skeeters go six plays, 29 yards, and 202, David, and they tack on the extra point with Carpio doing the honors. Here comes the kickoff. Carpio, the kicker for Mesquite. The Skeeters, again, leading 7 nothing, And back deep for Robert E. Lee is uh, Josh Burke, the junior, and Chad Holly, the sophomore, wide receiver, back deep inside the five-yard line. Carpio will approach. He's a big old guy. And long kick off to Burke at about the 7 at the 10. Looks for the wall at the 15. And nowhere to go and driven down at the 21-yard line. Boy, somebody ran right through the wedge and made one heck of a tackle for Mesquite. And, uh, Jamie, your thoughts on the first little meeting between J-Law and the defense? Well, Coach Law talking to his defensive unit, David, wasn't that disappointed with the way they played out there. Actually praised the outside guys for forcing the pitch and forcing the runs back to the inside, but talking to his inside backers, feeling they needed to do a better job. Also, they're running away from the two receivers, so he said to look for his guys. When they see two receivers on one side, slant the opposite direction. Well, Robert E. Lee has to respond here. Last time they played here they jumped on North Mesquite early they run the fullback counter to Nathan Tucker for a yard or two here's the Lee offense tackle to tackle Jake Kirkpatrick Chase Carlton Andrew Bailey Mario Trimble and John Landis tight end is either Michael Mason or Tyler Fleet one of the other the H back tailback is J Jason Williams the fullback on that carry Jason Tucker wide receivers all sorts of names Jacob Amy Jonathan Williams Marcus Jackson Michael Fuller Cruz Fry and Chad Holly depending depending on the down and the distance second down and ten Motion for Robert E. Lee to the near side. Preston Hill wants to throw, sets up in the pocket. Pass overshoots his intended receiver, Amy, on a little post pattern at the 35-yard line. Pretty good protection. He just overshoots his receiver. And Larry Bradford, Francis, and Taylor up front for Mesquite putting a little pressure, but he had him open. He overshoots Jacob Amy, and it's third and ten. Well, he rushed, he rushed the ball that time, David. Rushed the pass a little bit. The pressure wasn't too bad, but give credit to Courtney Starling, number 43 for Mesquite, on the coverage as he's right on the tail end of Amy. So third and ten. Jason Williams, the deep back for Robert E. Lee. Two receivers, Williams and Amy, to the near side. And Preston Hill, play action, sets up in the pocket. Sideline pass, almost picked off at the 33-yard line. Intended for Amy. And Jeremy Hernandez almost had a pick the other way. And Lee goes three and out. 9.07 to go in the first quarter, and here comes Josh Burke to punt for Robert E. Lee. Yeah, and Mesquite makes the plays there they need to. They get Lee on a three and out, David, and uh, it's just a lack of execution on Lee's part on their initial series on offense. Fourth down. Actually, Rainey is in the punt for Robert E. Lee inside the 10-yard line. Sean Rainey punting for Robert E. Lee. Snap, here comes movement up on the uh, defensive line, and not sure if it was brought on by the Mesquite front. 
or was it the a Lee offensive lineman that may have jumped a little bit? And if Lee doesn't put some energy into this first quarter, they're going to be facing a Russian roulette. Yeah, well, you know, coming out flat is really what you don't need to have happen. And the big return has set it all up for Mesquite. Now they have all the momentum right now currently in this game. Skeeters next week at home or on the road against Rockwell. Lee at home against Mesquite Horn. Fourth and 15 now. And, man, there's a lot of discussion over what was a simple five-yard procedure call. 9.07 to go in the first quarter, and Sean Rainey back in for what I think is his first or second official punt of the year. Mesquite jumps, no, no movement though. Nice punt by Rainey, turns it over. Hernandez will field at the midfield marker and go down immediately. Very nice coverage by Robert E. Lee. A 34-yard punt, and the Skeeters will take over right at midfield with a 7-0 lead, 8.58 to go in the first quarter. And they have field position at their beck and call. Once again, they start the first drive, David, at the lead 28, and they come out in this one, and they have it right at midfield. So uh, Lee's giving uh, Mesquite opportunities, and it's up to the lead defense to make a play here to stop the tide from rolling over. Hyder and Nicholson are the cornerbacks. Adrian Beard and Cuba and Hansen are the safeties in this setup, and Matt Uzel on the near side, but Justin Hansen is the bandit on the far side. First and 10, Mesquite at their 48-yard line. Page throws, pass to Burke, caught for about five yards inside lead territory. Tim Heider was there for a gain of five yards in a nice, simple pattern. Give him four, and it's second down and six. Just a nice action onto the right side for Mesquite. The receiver makes a curl pattern. Cuts back inside and makes the catch, and uh, a nice pitch and catch from Page to his receiver. Second down and six. Page in the shotgun with King, Ronald King, the senior, right next to him. Four receivers set after a four yard pickup on the pass. Lee with a four man front. Page runs the option near side. Uzel decks him for a loss of about four. Matt Uzel basically said, listen, if we're not going to get any inside pressure, I'll just take the running back and the quarterback, and he knocked him down for a loss of four. And on the backside, he had help, too, from Colby Wright coming along the play, and, of course, a nice step in from four or five Red Raider defenders to help stop Page on the run. So now third down and nine, Mesquite at their 49-yard line, 7.56 to go in the first quarter. Mesquite seven, Robert E. Lee nothing. This is Mesquite's second possession. Hernandez and King next to Page in the option. Kind of a, almost a, a spread shotgun option, almost a wishbone. Here's a pass over the middle, caught first down. How in the world did he catch that? But he did. Xavius Robbins, Lee had four players, it looked like, in the vicinity, and Kelly Page, as he was hit, throws a, a kind of a little lob throw, but a beautiful touch and a first down to the 33, gain of 16. Well, it appears Lee's back in his own defense, and the receiver just cuts right inside a crease, David, and he finds him, and, and Page does a magnificent job of getting the ball to his receiver for the first down. So first down, instead of third down and nine, they got the conversion for a gain of 16. Page in the shotgun, runs the option, fullback King does nothing there. Run down by Adrian Beard, one of the leading tacklers on this team. 40 tackles coming into this game, including a fumble recovery, and he knocks King down after no gain. The lead defense really has to stand up now, David. Their, their backs are against the wall. They cannot let this lead get up to two touchdowns, or it could be a very, very long night, and now's the time to make a stop. 6.54 to go in the first quarter, 7-0 Skeeters at the lead 34-yard line. Same spread, shotgun formation. Lee with a six-man front. Page runs the uh, option wide. He pitches it wild side to Hernandez at the 35. Runs over a corner, but a nice job by Cuba as he turned him to the ground at the 30-yard line. A short gain of three yards. And seven, kind of a weird deal, kind of an option out of the spread. You don't see that very often with two running backs right next to Page. He takes the snap at the 35. Back to throw, sets up in the pocket, over the middle, going deep. Cuba's there, falls down, but overshoots his receiver, Burke. Incomplete, but there's a flag down in the backfield. Holding against Mesquite at around the 40. This will cost them either 10 or Lee will force Mesquite to go fourth down. Most likely to take the 10 here, Jacoby McKenzie, the senior, has a chance to be a first-team all-district player this year. There's a lot of great defensive tackles, though, but he's played so well. It's third down. We'll see what the call 
or at least what Lee decides to do. And Kobe Ray is really making a push on the outside, and the call is going to be against Jeff Gwynn, the left tackle, for grabbing a hold from the backside of Kobe Ray and pulling him down from the backside. And uh, Lee's going to, looks like they may push him back. There. They'll take the penalty, so instead of fourth and seven, it is third down and 17. And Mesquite will take this snap from the 40-yard line just midway through the first quarter. And now the clock runs again. Mesquite le leading 7 to nothing. Shotgun this time. Four receivers set for Page. Four-man front for Lee. Page runs the draw to King. Tries to get out the corner at the 40 and drag down at the 38-yard line. Justin Hansen was there. And he came up like a rocket that time from the safety rover position and knocked him down for a gain of only two. And Justin came out of there like a bullet. And Lee's defense really rose to the occasion on this last set of downs, David. They made the stop they needed to make. The penalty aided them. But once again, it's the pressure from up front, forcing Page to make mistakes and quick decisions that he didn't want to make. Give credit to Lee's front four on this last series. So now Lee defensively has put Mesquite in a fourth and about 15 at their 38, at the Lee 38-yard line. Page looks to the sideline, watch for a pooch kick here. He's done that from very short, had one blocked against JT. Page throws the ball down the middle, got a man open and incomplete. He was open. He had beaten the safety and the linebacker, but he couldn't find his receiver, just overshoots him, and Lee gets a break right there. They'll turn it over on down. Yeah, and Lee's defense really was unawares of what was going to go on in that play, David, and Page quickly got the snap, threw it over the middle, but overthrew his intended receiver slightly, and as you mentioned, a big break for Lee, but it's the kind of break they really need right now to turn the tide of this game. Well, especially after that completion oh, yeah. on third down earlier when he somehow was able to get something into the receiver, Xavius Robbins. So Lee now with nice field position at their 38-yard line. They run the ISO to Jason Williams for about three or four tough yards out to the 43-yard line. John Landis, the lead block that time on the pull, and he got five yards at second down and five. And a nice hole open to the left side. Give credit up front to Chase Carlton and Andrew Bailey as they peel back and open the door right in front of the, the linebackers for Mesquite. Zarek Baldwin there to make the stop for the Skeeters. At the 43-yard line, second down and five with just over five minutes to go in the first quarter. Lee at their 43-yard line. Down by seven. Jonathan Williams near side. Tyler Fleet, the H-back. Play action, runs the bootleg. Preston goes deep. Williams caught it first down. Mesquite 24. What a throw by Preston Hill on the move. They went and took the fake to the tight end, and Jonathan Williams playing with that broken bone in his hand for a gain of 32 first down. And the play totally fooled Mesquite, David, with the rollout. No defenders in his way. He could have run the ball, but he couldn't run it on that, on that weak knee of his. But he found his receiver who beat him deep down the field. Here's a flag, though. We now just checked the flag. We'll watch the official. Eddie Everhart holding against Robert E. Lee on a 32-yard gain, and that has been the story of this season. That was perfectly executed, pressed it on the bootleg, near side, and what doesn't make any sense to me, and I'm sure Mike Owens wants to know about it as well, is that penalty flag is from the far side. It was a bootleg to the near side, and it wipes out a 32-yard gain and a 10-yard mark off back to the 33. What so now they have to overcome another 10 yards. As good a throw as they've had this year, as good an execution on a passing play this year. Perfect protection, very well run route, perfect throw, nice catch. It's all for naught. Mike Owens is jawing right now, I guarantee you, on the far side. Preston runs the stretch. Jason bounces outside at the 35 and nothing there at all. Ran right into the back of his receiver at the 36-yard line. Got two, and here's third and long. Jake Kirkpatrick with a pancake block for Robert E. Lee, but here's third down and long. Well, you can look back the, the mistakes and the penalty bug that's gotten Lee from time to time. If it wasn't for penalties, it's mistakes. And this one, hopefully they can overcome this adversity and pick up a first down on this upcoming third down play. So third and 12, maybe a little longer than that, at the 36-yard line with 4.05, under four minutes when they take the snap. Amy far side, Jonathan Williams to the near side. Hernandez will pick him up. Shotgun, no. It's going to be Preston under center with Jason Williams, the lone setback. He runs the play action sideline pass, knocked down, almost picked off at the midfield marker. Intended for Amy and great coverage on the far side by Courtney Starling that time. Or was it 24? It was 24 who knocked it down. Nice play on the sideline by Jamarte Jackson and Dion Dumas. So Lee, instead of having the ball first down at the Mesquite 24, they're punting the football. 
for the second consecutive possession. Back to punt, Rainey. High end over end punt will hit at the Mesquite 30 down to the 20. You get a great roll inside the 20, down to the 15, and down to the 12. Mesquite will take over their third possession of the first quarter. 7-0 Mesquite, and they'll start here at their 13-yard line. What a nice punt that time by Sean Rainey. Gets about a 15, 20-yard bounce, but it all counts. A 61-yard punt, the longest punt they've had this year. 51-yard punt, 51-yard punt, and the Skeeters will take over with 3.35 to go in the first quarter, up by seven. McKenzie, Ray, and Brown, the front three for Lee. Uzel, Faber, and Wall bounce it around on the outside and inside. They run the quarterback keeper. Page turns the corner at the 10, 15, 20. First down, 25, runs over a defensive back at the 28-9 yard line. That time, Uzel went for the quarterback, missed him that time, and Nicholson makes the stop at the 28, and a huge gain, 15 yards and a first down. Yeah, give credit to Kelly Page for making a great fake and then rolling out to the near side, David, and he's able to beat one defender outside for Lee, and he gets by him and picks up a nice big gainer and, and pulls Mesquite out of the shadow of their own uh, end zone. So second down, first and 10, Mesquite at the 29-yard line. You're listening to the game on our road radio on 96.1 FM here in Mesquite, thanks to Trinity Mother Francis Health System. Shotgun, Page, they want to run a reverse. They do pitch it back, and they've got a wall. 30, 35, 40, 45, first down, knocked down after a flag thrown on the other side of the field by Adrian Beard. Very well executed play as they picked up huge yardage, but maybe an illegal shift or formation. Jamie, you saw that thing from the beginning. Well, maybe, maybe Lee's gonna get a little makeup call here. Well, two guys moving at the same time. The uh, running back started on the left, went back to the right. The receiver also in motion at the same time, and uh, they will flag them because the back was moving towards the line of scrimmage. Well, they'll start now first and 15 at their 24. Shotgun Page, just a sophomore. King the senior right next to him. Page, draw, middle, 30, 35, excuse me, 25, 30 to the 31-yard line. Got most of it back and two or three more. And Ronald King, who had a 76-yard touchdown run last week, picks up seven yards at second down and eight. It's a really gorgeous night for football, too, David. At low 60s at game time and a uh, good crisp evening. Not quite a full fall evening. And, uh, you know, this, this is the kind of football weather that really we haven't had until the last couple of weeks, and uh, we're getting it tonight. Well, we haven't yet had that first. We had a, we had a, a little cool breeze. cold right. snap about two, three weeks ago, but around here you never know. It could be 35 and then 75. And time change, of course, tomorrow night. Page runs the option outside, gets a block, 35, first down, 40. What a nice downfield block by the receiver. Xavius Robbins that time. To carry in Cuba finally makes the stop, but Kelly Page is pretty much getting whatever he wants. Seven, eight, nine yards, he got 12 right there. Well, the fake is selling the defensive end. He can't get outside to contain him, and once he makes that fake and freezes the interior of the lead defense, he sets sells outside, and he picks up a nice big gainer there. 2.03 to go, clock running. First down, Mesquite at their 42-yard line. Skeeters lead 7-0. Shotgun, three receivers set, two this way. Far hash mark to the right. And Page takes the snap, wants to throw, pump and go, wants to go to Dirk, go deep to Burke, throws it deep. Only one there is Lee, and they almost picked it off. Tim Heider just could not run the football. That thing goes way over his head, and Page also took a shot as he released that pass. It's second down and 10. Well, that little pump he did really fool no one at all. The lead defender never bid on it. He kept trailing after the football, almost making the interception on the outside. And right as soon as he threw the ball, he's hit up front by George Faber, who lays a lick on Kelly Page. Page into the game, 66 of 132, hitting 50% of his passes, five interceptions, four touchdowns, and 832 yards. McKenzie now with Ray and Brown, three-man front, pretty stacked inside together. Page runs the fullback up the gut. That's gambling for only a couple of three. He took a shot at the 46-yard line, got about three yards. Somebody came up from the safety spot. Faber was there and hit Gamblin. Avery Gamblin was a part of this team a year ago as a sophomore. Well, Lee's doing a better job of enforcing the play back inside. On one or two exceptions, the defensive end's not covering the quarterback, and that's when he burns Lee, and right now Lee has to focus on him 
making that fake inside and keeping the ball, tucking it under, and having his trail tailback with him to make a pitch or keep the ball. Hernandez has checked back in. So has Trevon Stewart, who is uh, substituting for Rashad Manning today at one of the starting receiver spots. Page runs the option near side, gets around the corner, has a first down and may go. Nope, he's going to be knocked down at the lead 35. They had him wrapped up. Quet Nicholson knocks him down. They had possess I mean, they had penetration. They had him right where you wanted him, and everyone just stopped, and he picked up 18 yards. That's exactly what we're talking about. They did everything perfectly, like you mentioned. I mean, he just makes a great move, cuts back inside, and he finds daylight, and uh, that's just attributable to a nice, smart quarterback, and Kelly Page is a nice young one, too. First down, Page and Mesquite, another third down conversion as well. They have completely dominated this first quarter, but it's just 7-0 for now. Page in the shotgun. He runs it to the up back. That's gambling. He's got five. He's got ten. He's got another first down. Huge chunk right up the gut to carry, and Cuba makes the stop at the 20, but a gain of 16 yards on the play, and the Skeeters at the lead 20-yard line with 25 seconds to go in the opening quarter. And the Skeeters get a nice surge from their center and their right guard, really pushing back the Lee interior. Matt Clayton and Anthony Luna do a fine job opening the door for gambling, and he makes Lee's defense play with a big first down gain. And they're going to let the clock run out to end the first quarter with our score. Mesquite High School 7, Robert E. Lee nothing at the end of one on News Talk 600 KTBB. Four on third down conversions. And Page from the shotgun running the option and really has the lead defense right now very confused. Three-man front this time as they move back. Page runs the fullback gambling. And they knock him down. That time somebody got him in a hurry. George Faber said, I'm tired of this. As he got right into the uh, wickets that time of the running back gambling, and he got nothing, maybe a yard of the 19. What's well, a matter about playing assignment football? And the league coaches are very good at teaching assignment football to their defenders, as we've seen in past years. It's incumbent upon the players to make the plays. And at times, they, they look great in position. They're just not making tackles. And at other times, it's just great offensive execution for Mesquite. They will send uh, the receiver, Adrian Richards, far side. Two receivers this way, including Chris Burke and Xavius Robbins. Page runs the option near side, flips it outside to Hernandez. Nice job by Lee that time. He got back to the scrimmage, and that's it. Andy, excuse me, Michael Wall was there along with Roderick Brown. And it's third down and ten. Very nice possession that time as far as it should be penetration for Robert E. Lee. I'll promise you, Jay Law over there is telling him, stick with your assignments, stick with your assignments, and we can make the plays. And they've done it the last two plays on this current series. So Mesquite faces third and nine. They've converted on a couple of key third downs. Shotgun, Kelly Page. Three receivers, two this way, Burke and Robbins. Page back to throw. Lee brings the blitz, steps up in the pocket, goes in the end zone, incomplete. That thing was kind of a funny throw. That thing came a little strange like a Frisbee intended for Xavius Robbins. Colby Ray hit Page right when he threw it. And the Skeeters now will bring in Eddie Carpio, who has already kicked six field goals this year for what will be a 37-yard field goal attempt. And it, it may have been that pressure that caused a little bit of a wobbly, out-of-range pass delivered from Page uh, as they rushed him just a little bit, and he over outshot his defender by five or six yards up front. Here comes Carpio. He is a large individual, one of the bigger kickers. The snap will be to Cody Lanford. Here's the snap. It is almost blocked. It is up, and it is good. How in the world did Adrian Beard miss that? It almost as if he ran by it. He just didn't get the right point, but he got great penetration. Remember that in the future, but Carpio drills the 37-yard field goal, and with 10.36 to go in the second quarter. Mesquite 10, Lee nothing, back in 30 seconds on News Talk 600 KTBB. First quarter in uh, two minutes. 32 yard play, holding, it comes back. Lee in position defensively on many plays to have a chance to make a play in the backfield, but they can't make the play just for whatever reason. And one inch here, a foot here, and then almost a blocked field goal. It's 10 to nothing instead of Lee having the ball the other way. Here's Josh Burke on the kickoff return at the 25, breaks the tackle 30, out close to the 31 yard line. Nice return by Josh of 18 yards. And Lee will start at the 31-yard line. 10.27 to go in the first half. David Mesquite really does a great job on that drive. They take almost four minutes off clock, 3.59, go 11 plays and 67 yards, and Carpio tacks on a 37-yarder 
uh, for Mesquite to uh, up their lead. Well, Lee, three and out, and then three and out based on the holding call that brought back a first down, and the offense really needs to somehow come up with some plays here the rest of this half. Fleet will go in motion as the H-back. Play action pass, Preston Hill sets up in the pocket pass, caught by Amy for a about six or seven yards. Boy, he's a big old target. The junior receiver out to the 37 for a gain of six and a nice job by Preston in traffic. Greg Green on the stop for Mesquite. A little bit of uh, pressure, light coming in on uh, Preston. He does a great job from the outside. Uh, is Terrence, uh, pardon me, Quentin Taylor putting on the pressure and uh, Preston's able to get it away and complete the pass. Second down and four, Robert E. Lee at their 37 yard line. 9.52 to go in the first half. Marcus Jackson split near side as the flank flanker. Deep back is Jason Williams. They run the stretch to the near side and nothing there. Nice job by 44, Quinton Taylor. Listen to the stats for Taylor. 48 tackles, seven for tackles for losses, four sacks, two fumble recoveries, two cause fumbles, and he stopped Jason Williams. He might have lost a half a yard. And Mesquite runs out of a 3-4 defense, David. They get good pressure. They're not... Uh, letting Lee get a push off the line of scrimmage on any of the running plays so far in the yep. game, the handful that they've had, and they're stopping Lee running game, forcing Lee to throw the football. They've run the ball. Now, last week, eventually, they just could not run against John Tyler, but they ran the ball early. They've run the ball on everybody for a little bit, but tonight, nothing on the ground. Third down and four. Lone setback is Josh Burke. They run the flea flicker. Marcus Jackson, now he wants to run with it and nowhere to go. Now makes a man miss. Look at this play. 35, first down, 40. Marcus Jackson turns something out of absolutely nothing. They ran the flea flicker, and Marcus Jackson has a first down at the 45. Josh Burke with a key block. And Marcus ran 18 yards to gain about eight or nine actually on the play and does a great job of getting back outside really faking up three or four Mesquite defenders and just a well of an athletic play from MJ. Well, when he went back to throw, he's been there before with pressure, so he said, hey, I'm, let me kind of bounce this thing out, and you wonder if that, that uh, experience as a quarterback did not help at all. It, I mean, it did help a lot. Here's uh, Jason Williams up the gut, 45 of Mesquite. has close to a first down. I think he does. Hit the hole in a hurry. Tremble with the peel block, and Kirkpatrick leads the way. Gain of 11 first down. And Jason does a great job of allowing his lineman to open the hole. Really the best run of the night for Lee. He does an ex excellent job of finding the hole and darting through it for a first down. 8.40 to go in the first half. Robert E. Lee's offense for the first time in Mesquite territory, trailing by 10 at the Mesquite 42-yard line. 10-0 Skeeters. Tight end far side. They run the wing back counter. This is uh, Lee for about 4-5 down to the 36-yard line. Nathan Tucker, the junior, with Chase Carlton, the lead block that time off the left guard spot. He got on big guy Taylor and Francis in a gain of about six or seven yards down to the 36-yard line. And you mentioned a few minutes ago when Lee's had success running the football, they've been able to mix up the stretch with some misdirection and also pounding the fullback, Mitchell, up the middle, and that misdirection picks up a nice gainer there. Second down and four. Last week, that was the misdirection play to the other side going the other way that fooled John Tyler to set up Lee's only score. Josh, play action bootleg, wants to throw it. He's got a man deep. Mason caught it, and this will be a touchdown. Very well designed play. Bootleg, and you got to do that, Randy, because they ran the football that set up the 36-yard touchdown. Robert E. Lee, Michael Mason's third of the year. And this is the type of score that Lee can that Lee has the ability to do. It's a matter of execution, and they get it flawlessly in that play, and no flags on the field once again. Well, he had, I mean, Preston could have done three things. He had an up back Tucker. He also had Mason, who was all by himself and Preston could have run with the football, but why not throw it? Here comes Joseph Cleaver. Here's the snap, here's the hold, here's the kick is blocked. Blocked this 31, dove at it. Darren Lewis, the safety. You get a big play, you get an extra point blocked, but they got the six. 7.46 to go. Mesquite 10, Lee 6, back in one minute on News Talk 600, KTBB. Lee held to seven points last week. They've got six here. Their best game in a long time was recently when they beat North Mesquite here 23-21, but they scored most of those points, remember, early and then held on at the end. But that was what maybe makes this game a little bit better. And Mike Owens talked about it. Well, we do have good memories here from just a couple of weeks ago. Chris Burke and Jeremy Hernandez back deep. 
And Joseph, no, Taylor Matlock, excuse me, kicks off from the lead 40, squibs it, picked up by Mesquite and straight to the knees. Lewis at the 27 yard line. Man, he had a lot of room to run that time, but he is also the one that just blocked the extra point and Jamie Lent. Well, David, all season long when the Red Raiders have had success on the offensive side of the football, it's been when they've picked up good yardage on first down. On that scoring drive for the Red Raiders there, they pick up six, ten, and seven on their three first downs. That's almost eight yards per play on first down. Obviously, that makes things much, much easier on second and third down. And, and Lee loves to run misdirection, but they love to run misdirection with play action as well. You can do that when you're successful on first down. Three receivers to the near side. Kelly Page, the quarterback. Hands it off to the deep back for only a couple of yards. Defense there, Wall and Faber and a couple of others at the bottom of the pile that time for Robert E. Lee at the 29-30 yard line. Short gain for Gamblin, and it's third, a second and eight. Really, the best thing that can happen for Lee now is to get a good, quick three and out. Their defense really hasn't been able to do that yet this evening as Mesquite has pretty much had their way. Now is a good time to get the ball back quickly. Second down and let's say eight at the 30-yard line. Trips this way, left hash mark. Lee looks like they're bringing the blitz from the far side. Page wants to set up. Throws, pass, should be picked off. It is. Heider, 40, 35, has a block at the Mesquite 30, 25, down, excuse me, down inside the 10-yard line. Tim Heider, the first defensive back to pick off a pass this year. Anthony Luna saved a touchdown. 34-yard return, and Tim Heider's a player to remember in the future. And what did we say, David? This is a good time to make a stop. Well, they do it on the very next play with a big interception, only their second of the season, and now they set up their offense with a golden opportunity at the Mesquite 8. 6.58 to go in the first half. Lee will start this drive at the 8-yard line of Mesquite. It's 10-6. Jason Williams, the deep back. Preston Hill under center. Tight end to the near to the far side on the left hash mark. Stretch play. Jason bounces outside. Can he turn the corner? No, he doesn't. He got a yard. What a nice play by Darren Lewis. That is man on man right there. And Jason could not get the stiff arm and he got a yard. Second down and goal, 6.43 to go. Update from Trinity Mother Francis Row Stadium. John Tyler has just scored to tie Rockwall at seven apiece in what could be a shootout there. Longview is playing at North Mesquite. Lee's worried about right here, seven yards to go at the seven. Jamal Mitchell in as the up back for Robert Ely on second down and goal. Preston, play action pass, steps up in the pocket, throws in the end zone, fleet touchdown! What a nice job, and there should have been a flag because Tyler Fleet was bumped as he went to catch the pass, and Lee's thrown two touchdowns, Preston Hill to two tight ends. Execution there, Preston Hill is back, and he finds his receiver with double coverage on his backside, and he drills the ball in there, a pinpoint pass from Preston for six, and Lee has the lead because of a big defensive play. Huge play by Tim Heider. 34-yard return, two plays later, Lee is now taking the lead, here comes the extra point, the kick this time by Cleaver, he drilled it. Nice job by Matt Mullins to get down the snap. Carlton with a nice snap. Robert E. Lee, 6.15 to go, second quarter. 13, Mesquite 10, back in 60 seconds. Back in Mesquite where the Red Raiders now lead at 13 to 10 and a terrific catch by Tyler Fleet gives the Red Raiders the lead. Tyler appeared to not be looking for the pass, just got that left hand up in time, held the ball up there long enough for his right arm to pull it in. And Robert E. Lee, David, goes two plays, eight yards and 43 seconds. In a matter of four plays, in a minute, 25 seconds, we have a complete turnaround and momentum switch to the men from Tyler Lee in the white. Tyler Fleet, the last time he was in the end zone, was a two-point conversion in the state championship game against Spring Westfield. Remember that? Oh, yeah. Last time he was in the end zone. That's his 15th catch of the year for 195 yards. But, of course, his main weapon this year has been one of the hammers is basically amongst the offensive line. Nice job on the protection again to Preston. Here's the bouncing kick to uh, Hernandez at the 25 at the 30 and swung down right there. And guess who it is? You know, Adrian Beard has just been fantastic on kickoff coverage. I know they've turned the corner a couple of different times, 
but for a young Adrian Beard is 5'9", 160, and I think he's lying about the 160. Yeah, well, he makes plays on special teams, and being a junior, we'll see him back at his corner spot next year starting for Robert E. Lee as well. So first down, Carlo Lolar and Taj Lee in the game for Lee, along with Mark Brotherton, a completely new defensive line. Remember, Brotherton at 290 is just a puppy dog at sophomore. Wall up near the line of scrimmage. They run Kelly Page in the draw play. He's got only a yard and not even that. Yeah, he got about a yard, 32. Broke the first tackle, but then Taj Lee mops him up. And Michael Hunter was there as well. And Brotherton kind of was the one that disrupted that play in the middle. Well, as well, Page didn't get the handoff to his fullback. It was kind of a broken play. He didn't really want to run the ball outside. He tried to make something out of nothing, and uh, Lee is – has a little bit more pep and energy in their step down defense, David, and uh, it's a good reason why they're making some plays finally. Second down, nine. Mesquite down by three. First time they've trailed in this game. Triple receiver far side. Xavius Robbins to the near side. Page, shotgun, runs to Gamblin. Gamblin has about two, three, four outside the 35, but a nice job by Lee to wrap him up. And George Faber, who has nearly 90 tackles this year, makes the stop. For the Red Raiders, it's now third and five. You know, Mesquite's offensive line is not a bad size. They're averaging about 235 up front, David. And initially, in their first couple of series, they had the ball in the game. They were able to get a push off Lee's line. But right now, Lee's defense is fighting through the blocks and making some plays defensively. Third and four, they'll say, at the 37-yard line. Mesquite down 13 to 10 at their 37. Jacoby McKenzie back in to put pressure on. Page runs the quarterback option. He will not have it. George Faber, Michael Wall created disruption. George Faber created the tackle, and it's fourth and two Mesquite at their 39-yard line. And they might go for it here. You're talking about two teams that need to win on their home turf, and fourth and two, and here comes Jeremy Hernandez in the game. Lee has problems with their substitutions. Kelly Page may help him out a little bit. Now coming in from the sideline is Avery Gamblin. And he also is, again, a pooch kicker, remember. He's done that before. Steve Halpin, his coach, is staring at him. Page takes the snap, little pooch kick, and gets it off. End over end, and it'll dribble down inside the lead 30, down to the 25. And he did that against John Tyler. I was here for that game when JT just blew him up. And JT, he was so close to the line of scrimmage, they blocked two of those. 35-yard punt. And Robert E. Lee's offense has scored in their last two possessions, will take over with a three-point lead at their 26-yard line. Now what Coach Owens and Dow Wynn and company would like to do, and Coach Fleet, is to have a nice three- to four-minute drive here, eat up the clock and, and capitalize and get in the end zone as the defense has made the plays they need to with a big interception and a three and out. Let's see if the Lee offense can respond. Williams and Amy, and you wonder if the touchdown passes may shake up the Mesquite secondary if you give Preston the time. Here's Jason Williams up the middle, 35. First down, 40. Oh, he ran right up the back of his wide receiver. Get up, Jonathan. He's going to be okay. Chase Carlton with a great job in the pull block at left guard, and he just gave Jason Williams nothing but air. Gain of 13 yards in a first down. And Lee's offensive line now is suddenly waking up. You know, it took them a whole quarter to wake up tonight, but I think they know they have a chance to take control of this game and seize control and keep it for the remaining of the halves. First down, Robert E. Lee at the 38-yard line, offset eye. Johnson or Williams and Amy near side. Jason Williams, first down, gets about four outside the 40. Andrew Bailey with a little team block with Mario Trimble got four. Second down and six, 3.30 to go in the first half, 13 to 10, Robert E. Lee. Now the play calling is trying to lull Mesquite into thinking we're going to try to power it down your throats. Let's look and see if Preston goes downfield in this play, David. Yeah, play action pass. They had the play action that set up the long play to Jonathan Williams. Play action of the touchdown to Mason and to Tyler Fleet. Marcus Jackson near side. Williams, the flanker, in the slot. They run the fullback counter, and Tucker got nothing. That play, which was the play that Jimmy Gamble, remember, ran for the touchdown for 70, and the only score against JT. Peyton Price ran that play better than any fullback that Lee has ever had. 
better than even Keandre Smith and Jimmy Gamble and company, but that just hasn't been effective most of this year. And the key is the offensive line's not really pulling fast enough to beat off the blocks and to knock people back. And that's probably in addition to why that play hasn't been that effective. And when it works, they do well because yep. it did last week. Jamal Mitchell went 41, and they scored. Preston back to throw. In the pocket, going deep. Receiver, Williams caught it and dropped it. Oh, he almost had it. Great job, though. That was not on the receiver. Jeremy Hernandez pulls it down as Jonathan's about to make the catch. Great protection, great throw, and a great job of coverage by Jeremy Hernandez. It's fourth down. Well, that ball was really right on the mark. Deep downfield, Williams running. Hernandez had fallen behind a couple of steps, but he does a great job as a defender. Once he sees the ball, hits the receiver's hands, he puts his arms down and flails away, and the ball flies free. Rainey back to punt. His last was 51 yards. We'll take the snap from Chase Carlton at the 43. Great snap. Here comes the punt by Rainey. He turns it over. He booms this one. Hernandez fair catch at the 20. Inside the 20. And Sean Rainey with a nice job of the punting. Josh Burke has been punting the last couple of three weeks since Preston went down. But he is now part of that offensive weaponry. And so he's not going to do that as much. 39-yard punt by Rainey, who's averaging over 40 yards a punt. In this, the first half. 2-10 to go, first half, 13-10, leads up by three. Score update from Trinity Mother Francis Rose Stadium. Rockwall 10, John Tyler 7, second quarter there. 1490 ESPN with Bill and Kevin. Page in the shotgun. Colby Ray, McKenzie, and Brown the front three for Lee. Wall and Uzel pinching the outsides. They run the deep back, and he got nothing. And now Lee's defense starting to get the flow of this game. Jacoby McKenzie and Roderick Brown. Brown gets credit for the stop and he got a yard. Yeah, you can see they're keeping with their assignments, but they're also just fighting through and speeding through blocks. Mesquite's bigger offensive line's not able to get off their blocks quick enough and Lee's defense is responding the last couple of series and it all started with that big pick and the stop down on the other end of the field on four down. Four wide out set, two to each side. The deuce formation either way. Gambling the lone setback page in the shotgun. Page runs the quarterback draw, gets a couple of three, gets a nice block downfield at the 25 and runs into Cuba, short of the first down at the 27-yard line. That time the cornerback kind of got sucked in on the wide receiver crack back. He got seven, third down and two. And a nice play in open field down the field for Cuba, fighting through a block that was coming at him from the wide receiver, but he saw Page all the way and was able to wrestle him down. Remember now, Takeri and Cuba tore some meniscus during weight workouts during the August two-a-days and has not played at 100% all year. Nobody at this time of the year is probably 100%. Here comes the blitz on the outside, and Page fumbles the football. Mesquite has recovered, but Matt Uzel, I think either Matt Uzel or Jeremy Moore, Jamie, came from the outside, and that was trouble for Mesquite. Timeout lead. Jamie? It was actually a junior Michael Hunter coming from the outside. He goes strong up into the blocking back on that play and actually gets a hand out and forces the fumble as well. Terrific play by the junior. Yeah, eight in that Rockwall game yeah. when he went out to boot. So fourth down, and Page will go back in that semi-punt, semi-pooch, semi-shotgun formation. Back deep for Robert E. Lee, Marcus Jackson. Block by Jeremy Moore. Now Lee needs to pick it up inside the 10, and they have the football at the Mesquite five-yard line. Jeremy Moore. And that's the danger, Jamie Lent, of the pooch formation to punt the football. That's exactly right. The right-footed punter trying to get it away on the right side. That's where Jeremy Moore comes from. Only gets one hand on the ball, but it was enough. Jeremy Moore, not a real tall kid, but got some mad hops. He showed him there. Recovered by Colby Ray. It could have been several players down there. Lee had a touchdown drive that started at the Mesquite eight-yard line. This one, with 40 seconds to go, will start at the Mesquite five. Straight eye formation with Mitchell and Williams. Preston Hill, Jason up the gut, near the goal line, doesn't get in, stopped at the one. Now you got to watch the clock and they take a timeout with 33 seconds to go. What a nice lead block that time by Carlton and Kirkpatrick at the point of explosion. But Jamal Mitchell came in there hard as well, and it's second down and goal. Gain of six on the play, excuse me, four on the play, Jason Williams who this year has scored 11 rushing touchdowns. And the tackles, Jerry Reed, the ends, Willie Williams, linebackers, Jay Law, the secondary, Randy Huffstickler. Special teams, Willie Williams, 13 to 10, one timeout remaining. 
The ball at the Mesquite one yard line, and Lee will go tight end, far side, left hash mark, straight eye. Preston, Jason, goal line, should be in. My goodness, he's talking, he's, he's touching the goal post. Touchdown, Robert E. Lee. It's almost as if they didn't want to say he was in when he scored easily. Trimble, Landis, and I believe that neither Tucker or possibly Seaton led the way as well. 19 to 10, Robert E. Lee. Smash mouthing it into the end zone, just powering with their 1,000 yard rushing running back. And Jason Williams, he knifes through for six for the Red Raiders. Here comes the extra point by Cleaver, and the kick is up, and it is good. Our score, 26 seconds to go, and Lee was down 10-0, and they were kind of in hibernation. They've awakened. They've awakened. They are all awake. They're up 20-10 to 10 back in a moment on KTBB. Robert E. Lee with now a 10-point lead. Taylor Matlock, line drive kick down inside the 20-yard line, and... Lee with nice, uh-oh, he turned the corner, and he's got a lot of room. 35-40. Midfield keeps going into Lee territory, and they've got a great field goal kicker. Oh, my goodness, that's a very, very good return. And they had him penned up, and they just kind of let him go, and he got about 40 yards on the kickoff return. 37 yards out to the midfield marker into Lee territory. But two lead defenders going down the field just totally ran right by him and missed him, and all he did is make a step out and he did a great job of bringing it down the far sideline. Robert E. Lee scoring summary after the block punt. Two plays, five yards, and 15 seconds. Lee now on defense has an interception and two straight three and outs. Lolar and Taj Lee with Brotherton and McKenzie, a four-man front. On first down, Page wants to throw, sets up in the pocket, going over the middle, throws it up for grabs, and the ball should be intercepted. And it, oh, no, here comes a flag. Oh, oh my goodness. From the near side with the back judge sitting there where the pass came down incomplete. And if Mike Owens didn't go nuclear in the first quarter, he might now. Because that puts Mesquite at the lead 15 yards. They'll be at about the 37-yard line. Still 10 seconds remaining. The back judge was right there where the play came down, and he didn't throw a flag. But the official on the Mesquite sideline throws it from this side and what he saw that the other one didn't who knows and they're discussing it now with the referee Eddie Eberhardt Wow well there might have been simultaneously simultaneous contact but Cuba was playing the football unbelievable Clearly. Absolutely. Clearly. pass interference against Robert E. Lee 15 yards it will not be for the spot of the foul otherwise it would be at the lead 22 yard line how in the world and I know we're not supposed to talk about this, but I'm sorry. They threw a pass down the middle of the field. The back judge was within 10 yards of where the play came down, and the linesman on this side throws the, the flag at least 30 yards. Mesquite 7 at halftime. And Rockwell continues to lead John Tyler late second quarter, right, J uh, Justin? 10 to 7. What's that? Oh my goodness, Rockwell 16 and John Tyler 7 at halftime. Rockwall and JT, two of the surprise teams this year, battling at Trinity Mother Francis Rose Stadium. Man, that's a big penalty against Lee. 15 yards down to the 32 yard line, 10 seconds to go. Page in the shotgun. Got to get penetration if you're among the front four. Now a flag comes down. No, a timeout is called by Steve Halpin, the head coach here, with now one timeout remaining. That's all they need in the holster for them to have a chance to set up any kind of field goal here. To the Lee 32-yard line, 20 to 10, Robert E. Lee with 10 seconds to go in the half. Five defensive backs in the game, a three-man front. McKenzie kind of in a zone blitz formation. Back to throw, Page, McKenzie up the middle pass, caught by Burke at the 21 to the 20, and Mesquite calls a timeout. Main, the, irrelevant, the main thing is he got a, enough for the field goal attempt here. That's the third completion of the first half for Kelly Page. Carpio, last one was 37. This is about 38. Lanford is the holder. Remember, Adrian Beard almost blocked the last field goal. The snap will come from Bush. Snap, hold, kick, long enough, and it is good. No, it's no good. He missed it to the right. 
That's only justice. Halftime, Robert the 20, Mesquite 10, and Neither team had a lot of yardage. Remember, North Mes or, excuse me, Mesquite had over 100 yards to lease seven in the first quarter, but then not much at all in quarter number two for the Skeeters. Here's the kickoff that hits on the ground, and it's on the ground, and Mesquite's got it. Two players from Lee just stood there. Unfortunately, Mason and Moore uh, may have been Mitchell, and it just, it just landed in between the two of them. And Jamal couldn't get to it, and Mesquite has recovered at the lead 26-yard line. The kicking game continues to really, really hurt Robert Lee this year. There's just no question about it. Well, that's just a bad, bad wow. break, and that's just the players that aren't really focused to come out and play in the second half when you have muffs like that and then uh, non-responsiveness from the other teammates. So Kelly Page gets the ball at the 26, so deferring the kickoff basically goes completely out the window. Page throws to Burke on the sideline. Nice job by Hyder to clean him up at about the 23-yard line. A short gain, but a, an effective, efficient pass for about four. And, and that's kind of when, you, the, and there have been times this year where somebody has to just take control of the situation. If there's any kind of confusion, you would rather make a mistake being aggressive rather than being passive. And that, that's just you have a 10-point lead and you just let the ball hit the ground. That's it, unfortunate. You hate to see it. But that gives Mesquite the ball right there like a turnover, and what it was at the 22-yard line is where they are now, second down and six after a gain of four to Burke. Now Kelly Page runs the option near side, pitches back to King, gets a block at the 20-15, first down, slides through, tackles down to the 10. Nice execution from Kelly Page as he gets the ball off just in the nick of time right before he's hit on the outside by Colby Ray and uh, the quarterback efficiently running the option and pitches back to his running back who has a nice run down the sideline. So Mesquite has first and goal at the lead 10 and this basically almost erases one of those block punts or interception earlier, a 12-yard pickup by King. Page runs the quarterback up the gut. He'll score. 38 seconds into the third quarter. And Mesquite has just scored on an onside kick that was not meant to be an onside kick. And three plays, touchdown. And I know we're up here kind of in shock the way this third quarter has started, especially the way Lee dominated the entire second quarter. Jamie, I'll come to you in a moment after the commercial break. Carpio comes in for the extra point. Snap is up. The kick is good. And 38 seconds into the third quarter, Lee was supposed to get the ball first. Mesquite does, and they're within three, and we're back in 60. Coaching staff, Jamie Lent, going to halftime with a momentum 20 to 10 lead. They talk about getting the opening kickoff and moving the ball down the field. And the offense is yet to run a play in the third quarter, and they've given up seven. That's a very disappointing way to start the third quarter. And eerily similar to the start of this ball game, David. It was a big play in the kicking game where Mesquite took the ball and ran it past the midfield stripe and started inside the lead 35-yard line to start the game. Two minutes later, Page scored the touchdown. Well, the start of the second half, they start at the lead 32-yard line. Once again, Page scores a touchdown. This time it takes less than 40 seconds. And anyone that questions, why do they keep doing the pooch kick? It never seems to work. Well, we saw why. It just takes one little split-second lack of communication. And here comes an onside kick by Mesquite, and I think they have it again at the 49-yard line. They do. Mesquite has just kicked the onside kick and recovered. Number 49, Ladarius Kinney, number 48, as Carpio dribbled that thing right over the midfield marker. That's the second week in a row that Lee has given up an onside kick. Last week it didn't count because John Tyler was called for offsides. And, Jamie, they still haven't run an offensive play. Well, the kicking game problem problems that Coach Owens spoke about at halftime, David, rearing their ugly head once again to start the second half. Mesquite at the lead, 49. Three-man front, Page in the shotgun. Snap, runs the quarterback. Keeper inside the lead, 45, and just kind of bulls his way. Wall. Michael Wall on the stop for Robert E. Lee Lee's defense here to start the second half. Ray McKenzie and Brown up front. Linebackers are Wall in favor. 
Rover and Bandit, Hunter and Uzel. Cornerback is Hyder and Beard. Actually, Hyder and Nicholson and Beard and Cuba are the safeties. And right now, let's make it real plain and simple. Somebody in a red and white jersey has to get angry and do something to change the momentum of this third quarter, which has been a nightmare start. Page runs the play to King, and there's a play. There's a great play by Michael Wall, the senior right there, the 215 senior, and a loss of four yards in the play. It's second down now, third down and nine. Well, Mesquite, in a matter of four plays, David, of course, they scored three plays, 26 seconds, uh, 26 yards in 37 seconds. They get the quick onside kick, and uh, Lee's defense is incumbent upon them now to make a statement and a stand and knock down this Mesquite rally. Uh, this is unbelievable. I, you, you, you're Mike Owens. You just got to be scratching your head on what has happened here. Third down at about nine and a half. Shotgun to Page. Wants to throw the wide receiver screen. Now he's in trouble. Pressured by McKenzie. And he's going to throw it at the 40. There's nobody there. There's nobody there. That ball did not get past the line of scrimmage. It did not get back the line of scrimmage. It has to be intentional grounding, does it not? It would have to be. Even though he's outside the pocket, the ball never passed the line of scrimmage. It has to pass the line of scrimmage, which means he should be marked down at the Mesquite 37-yard line. They are talking about it with the head official. Pressure from Brown. Roderick Brown, by the way, put the pressure on the quarterback. For re They're still trying to discuss what the call should be. Oh my goodness, they're gonna call it an incomplete pass. Kelly Page was forced from the pocket. He tried to throw it with Brown on top of him, but the pass never crossed the line of scrimmage. You have to cross, cross the line of scrimmage. Right. And it's fourth down. The great news there, it's a, not overlooked the great news. The great news, Roderick Brown puts pressure that time on the quarterback, Marcus Jackson. What a huge stand defensively by Lee after the onside kick that gave Mesquite great field position. And give credit to Faber and Uzel for snuffing out the screen by picking up the backs out of the backfield and from the slot position as well. It has to be an intentional grounding call, but they don't call it. Here's a line drive punt by Page to the Lee 30, down to the 25, and it will roll dead at the 22-yard line. He came away from the pocket. He rolled to the near side. Brown had his shoulder pads. He tried to throw the ball. It went straight into the ground with no receiver in the area. If you want to throw it away when you're out of the pocket, you can do so, but you have to get the ball past the line of scrimmage. Four officials meet. They rule it incomplete, but Lee's defense does force the turnover in the downs, and they will get the ball at the 22. And they, they do a great job of getting a stop when they needed to, and now finally they have the ball on offense here in the second half. 20-17, to 17, Mesquite is within three after the... Really quick touchdown. Preston Hill to Jason Williams, left tackle for about four. Nice job by the safety to come up and force the play after a gain of six yards. Trimble with the pull that time for Robert E. Lee, and Jason Williams now has 10 carries for 47 yards. And early on in the game, Lee had a problem getting a push. The offensive line there, along with a great pull block, as you mentioned, gets a nice surge off the line, and Jason falls behind it for a nice big game. Amy and Williams far side. Amy the split receiver, Williams in the slot. Offset eye with Mitchell. Preston, Jason, left tackle, 35, first down, 40, tripped up. He almost went the distance. First down, Lee at the 42-yard line. Gain of 13 yards in the play for Jason. Darren Lewis saved a touchdown. There's a gigantic hole that he goes through. Give credit to Andrew Bailey and Chase Carlton and also Trimble. Those three right up front just open a massive hole, and Jason Williams plows through it for a big gainer. Kirkpatrick, Carlton, Bailey, Trimble, and Landis. Tackle to tackle. Bailey the snap to Preston, up the gut. This is Jason, 45 near midfield, gains six or seven more, and Lee has found something now with the big boys inside, getting six and seven yards right up the gut. Carlton with a pull, and second down and three. Well, the offensive line, David, is coming out with a, a real fresh approach and a real fired up one. They're, yeah, they're just, probably yeah. mad because they haven't had the football. <laughs> yeah, they're just simply blowing <laughs> off the Mesquite uh, seven off the ball. David. So it's second down and three, Lee had just inside their territory at the 48. Tight end is Fleet. Preston, fullback counter. Nothing there. It continues to never work, at least on this particular series. Wadley with a great play. That's just a great play. If he doesn't make the play, then Tucker has a great chance to go a long, long way because there was nobody else down there. He lost two yards. It's third down and five. Well, what, what happens is when you get a pull block coming out that way, the linebacker sees the hole 
to his advantage where he can just shoot right through it. You gotta and, hope uh, you can fake the guy. The yeah. misdirection, you hope he just takes that one step. But he did. But you so. gotta hit that play very quickly. Nobody did it better than Peyton Price. Third down and about five deep pitch back. This is Mitchell close to a first down at midfield into Mesquite territory and right at the sticks at the 49 yard line. It will depend on the spot and this looks like a first down for Robert E. Lee. Boy, what a start to this third quarter. Bizarre, I to mean, say the least. Uh, Jamie, have you ever seen such a thing? Well, David, uh, it's, it's definitely been strange. The Robert E. Lee crowd's gone from excited to deathly quiet, and now they're getting back up onto their feet after this offense picked up a couple first downs. So, you, I mean, and really the thing that's funny about it is that second onside kick was only because they said, what the heck, we, could, we, just, we don't need to waste the 30, 40 yards downfield. But Lee's defense came up with a big three and out. First down, they run the ISO. Jason secondary, 35-30, breaks a tackle, slips down inside the 25. He got ahead of himself, but what a great play. Chase Carlton, he was downfield, he hit the linebacker, then he went and found a safety, and Jason picked up 26 yards in the first down. And Lee right now has great execution at all levels. All 11 men on the play are doing their job, and Jason really just stumbled upon uh, trying to cut back, just stumbled on his own feet that time, or he might have even scored. 26 yards for Jason Williams. Jacob Amy was downfield, and Jason approaches 100 yards. Here's the counter. Trey leans towards the 20, got about two, down to the 21. Kirkpatrick was there, but not much movement there. Second down and long. Here's the clock, 6.45 to go, third quarter. Robert Lee 20, Mesquite 17, the winner stays alive depending on what happens throughout the rest of the district, but they have to at least win themselves tonight. Either one of these teams, for any chance to make next week count, they need to win tonight and then hope for some good things around the district. Jason got a yard that time, 94 yards on 14 carries. They were on the stretch. Jason squeezes down close to the 20, down to the 16-yard line. He got five more. It's third down and four. And Robert E. Lee right now is very patiently moving down the field, all on the ground, not a single passing play. This will be the ninth play upcoming on this current drive, and they've done it all on the ground. They're really trying to give their defense a breather as they've been on the field about 15 minutes of this ball game total. So now midway through the third quarter, Lee with a 10-point halftime lead. It's down to three, but a very impressive drive in the red zone on third and four at the 16 of Mesquite. Preston, Jason, right tackle, very close. He ran in the back of an offensive lineman that time. Lead blocked by Kirkpatrick and Carlton. It brings up fourth down, about two yards short. Jason ran into the back of an offensive lineman and just crumbled straight to the ground, and somebody had him by the ankles. And here's a huge fourth down at about two. Yeah, Lee really has a great opportunity to go ahead and get another first down and continue this nice long drive. 5.21 to go, third quarter. Timeout, Lee. Red Raiders 20, Mesquite 17. We're back in one minute on News Talk 600, KTBB 2. Lee takes a timeout. This is a huge play for field position, scoreboard position, and momentum. The wingbacks are both Fleet and Mitchell. Double wing formation. Preston Hill, play action pass. Throws the screen pass into the side. Was it picked off? No. Through the arms of Jason Williams, he had room to run. That thing just had nothing in it. And they go to the airways, and Mesquite stops them. And that was just a strange, strange play. It looked like he had plenty of room to run, but I don't know if Jason was expecting to throw. Well, the pass was a little bit behind him, but he should have caught the football as it glanced right off his arm and his shoulder. And Lee tra travels all the way down the field and takes off four and a half minutes off the oh, clock. Man, the red zone. Yep. The red zone Ate problems that they've had all year long. The one-yard line at Rockwall, the 13 at Coleraine. First down at the 14. Mesquite now has the football. They scored their first possession after that strange fumble on the opening kickoff of the third quarter. Page runs the running back King and he's tracked down by Ray but he squeezes out past the 15. He was hit in the backfield and he got away from Roderick Brown but Justin Hansen comes in and makes the stop and Thank goodness he got on him because he started to come loose. He got three yards. And Roderick Brown does a great job of fighting into the backfield. Yep. He's back there just as soon as the running back gets the ball, but he just cannot bring him down. He slides right through the hands of Rod Brown and picks up a couple. On the job training for a lot of these juniors and some players, Wall and Kirkpatrick, who didn't play at all last year, second down and seven. Page runs the quarterback option, tries to get around the corner at the 20. 
Down at the 23, coming up on the corner, Quet Nicholson and Adrian Beard was there, but Page does pick up four yards. He has a strange, long, loping type of a gait, but he seems to not be covering many yards, and the next thing you know, you look up, he's got five and six, he got four right there. Yeah, he's 6'2", 180, and slender. And uh, he's walking with a little bit of a limp, and he missed the Longview game early uh, in district play, the first round of district play, and uh, not that it would have mattered as Longview put a shutout on him here at Hamby, but, uh, but he's a nice little quarterback and runs a nice little option. Option here maybe on uh, third and two at the Mesquite 23. Page from the shotgun takes the snap, wants to throw. Over the middle, he's got a man open, caught it. First down at the lead, 43 wide open. He found... Xavius Robbins to carry in Cuba in coverage. He got right behind to carry in 34 yards. Mesquite is at the lead 43 yard line and threatening to take the lead. Yeah, great execution and a nice fake by the quarterback, but he finds a receiver who has two steps on Cuba who falls behind him and uh, Page delivers a strike right to his receiver. And John Tyler has taken the lead on Rockwall quickly in the third quarter, 20 to 16. That's music to the ears of Mesquite and Lee or whoever wins this game. King on the draw play runs right into the hands of Matt Uzell and many others. He never does go down, but the whistle blows and he lost a yard. It's second down and 11. Now, you know, every couple of plays, the lead defense is right in the backfield or, or, or shooting past the blocks, doing a great job of playing containment. And in some plays that they don't make it, there's not enough consistency from the lead defense. But on that play, they do a very, very good job. All right, let's set the bottom line here. Lee was up by 10 at halftime. They're only up three. Mesquite's at their 44, three minutes to go, third quarter. Both these teams needed Rockwall to lose. They were winning at halftime. John Tyler has taken the lead. Neither one of those teams knows that. This is getting to be more and more important each play. Shotgun page, second down and 11. A little wide receiver bubble screen at the 45. Turns the corner at the 40 and knocked out of bounds at the 41. Adrian Beard was there who got on the tackle that time of Xavius Robbins, who gets down to the 41-yard line and a gain of three and a four yards. Mike Owens wanting a block below the waist on the outside on the peelback block with a second down play of about four. Give credit to Quet Nicholson, too, as he bottled up the receiver, saw the play forming in front of him, although he was being backtracked down the field a bit. He's there also on the tackle along with Beard. Here's a huge third and seven, maybe four down territory at the lead 40-yard line, Page with five wide receivers. Michael Wall and Uzell come from the outside. They run the wide receiver pass. First down, 40, down to the 35, excuse me, close to the first down at the 35. Nice job that time. Tripped up by initially Matt Uzell. Three yards short of the first down. Hernandez gets to the 36. It's fourth down and two and a half. Well, they go to the bubble screen again, but the defense is there to snuff it out as they read the play. Lee is in. Kind of a zone, and, and they actually follow the wide receivers out to the wide side of the field to make the stop on th this side of the field. Fourth down and three. Two minutes to go, third quarter. Lee leads by three. Mesquite, deuce receivers each side. Page in the shotgun from the Lee 36. He runs the quarterback. Draw first down at the 31. First down at the Lee 32. Excuse me, they mark him down short. He fell through the line of scrimmage. Hanson was there, but he picked up a first down. You got to credit the Mesquite offensive line for getting a nice surge on the play, allowing their quarterback to find the hole that he needed to pick up a very important first down on the drive. Michael Hunter involved in that play. 16 carries, 15 carries in the game. 15 carries, 82 yards, and Mesquite continues the possession on a fourth down. They converted. Lee did not, which started this drive for Mesquite inside their 20. First down, Page, bubble screen outside and dropped by Hernandez. He had room to run. Cuba was in the vicinity. Ball came loose, but that is not a fumble. It's an incomplete pass. Wall was there. It's second down and 10. They've all of a sudden started using that a little bit different in the second half, that second little bubble screen to the outside. Well, what they're trying to do, David, is force the field to be even stretched out a yep. little bit further to open that middle either for, for Page on a fake on the option or the fullback dive up the middle. Minute 27, clock stops. It's 20-17, to 17, Robert E. Lee leading by three. Two teams fighting for their playoff lives here at Hanby Stadium. Page in the shotgun. Two receivers near side. Wants to throw, sideline pass to Burke. Caught it. Breaks a tackle near a first down. Tim Hyder doesn't miss many tackles. He did right there, and that sets up a more manageable third down and about a yard now inside the lead 25 down to the 24. If there's one tell 
to the whole season for Lee, it's it's the missed tackles that they've had time and time again this season. When they have man-to-man coverage, that would have been a great tackle and a manageable one at that, but it's not made, and you see what happens. Mesquite, like you said, has a good chance to pick up a first. A little less than two yards from the Lee 25-yard line with under a minute 30 to go in the third quarter. Kelly Page takes the snap, quarterback draw, tries to bounce it outside, cuts it inside, first down. Here comes a flag down, and that might have been a face mask. Colby Ray on the tackle, and that could be half the distance of the goal line. Jamie Lett, you saw something pretty quickly. Yeah, near the time he was going to the ground, David, the hand gets up and into the face mask of your quarterback page. His head snapped back a little bit. All depends on whether it's a 5 or 15 yard. Yeah, it'll be half the distance most likely because if any kind of a, a jerk of the helmet, flags came from everywhere, and it is 15 yard personal foul. And Mesquite with a minute nine to go in the third quarter in a game that has been completely different from one quarter to the next. And you still think about this, Randy. Lee with a 10-point lead to start the second half. They get the opening kickoff. The thing hits the ground between two players. Mesquite recovers. They score in three plays, and they're knocking on the door again at the 10. 15 or half the distance that time on a face mask call that will cost Lee 10 more. Shotgun Page. Gambling right to his right, from the 10, takes the snap, rolls to the far side. Now pitches out wide, and will lose about 9 or 10. Huge play by Michael Hunter. Here comes a flag in at the end of the play, after the play is over. And this could be an unsportsmanlike penalty call against somebody downfield near the goal line. Adrian Beard was tied up with somebody near the goal line. The Lee players are walking back to the goal line. This could go against Robert E. Lee. This came after the play was over. Adrian Beard was tied up with a player down near the goal line. Dead ball, personal foul. Wow. On a loss of nine yards. And Lee on this particular possession defensively hurting themselves dramatically. Yeah, with the penalties, two big ones back to back. I got six for 53 yards now after this one's marked off. Only two for 15 against the Skeeters. So instead of first and goal, or excuse me, second and goal from the 19-yard line, it is first and goal back inside the lead 10. They've had a face mask call and also the personal foul, dead ball, unsportsmanlike penalty there. First down and goal, Page in the shotgun. They run King. He runs it outside, turns the corner at the 10-5, down to the goal line. May have gotten in, no, just shy of the first down. And Adrian Beard or somebody near the point of attack got caught up again and just could not pull away from the blocker. And Mesquite now will end the third quarter at the Lee one-foot line and will go to the fourth. One of these two teams' playoff hopes dies tonight. We'll come back with the fourth quarter after this on News Talk 600 KTBB. Not picking up a fumble to start the third quarter. Mesquite scores in three plays. Another onside kick that Lee's defense holds. Lee marches down inside the red zone, but has been the case a lot this year. They couldn't convert on a fourth down. And now Mesquite, second down and goal at the Robert E. Lee one-yard line. And Page in the shotgun. Four-man front. Takes the snap. Runs the quarterback draw. And I don't know if he got in or not. Did not. Jacoby McKenzie or Mark Brotherton was there. Jamie. Also, George Faber in on the play. Faber does a nice job of getting across the line of scrimmage. Nice penetration there. He's the first man on the scene, and he brings down Page. Actually, they'll lose about half a yard. Well, if you're Mesquite football coach Steve Halpin, wouldn't you want to just run into this side of the field with where you've gotten a couple of cute, uh, huge calls? Third and goal now at the Lee one-yard line. Shotgun for Page. Takes the snap, runs the quarterback, draw, and touchdown. Knifed through, touchdown Mesquite. They have scored in the first two minutes of the first quarter. They scored in the first couple of minutes of the second quarter, in the first 38 seconds of the third quarter, and the first 36 seconds of the fourth quarter. And to top it all off, they had the ball well over seven minutes in the third quarter and the last 5-16 as they started this drive, way back downfield at least 14, they go 86 yards. Lee for, uh, for, could not convert on a fourth down and two, and Mesquite gets a huge play. Remember on the pass play over the middle, extra point by Carpio, gives the Skeeters a lead 24 to 20. 
and Lee now, their playoff hopes and their hopes for a 500 season on the line. And Mesquite, they're down four as Mesquite has scored 14 unanswered points back in 60 seconds. Timeout. Jamie Lent, Mike Owens was having uh, some pretty heated conversations with guys in Stripe at Church, was he not? Not just Mike Owens, but the rest of the Robert E. Lee coaching staff chewing quite a bit, as you mentioned, David, the official now just walking away and saying, all right, guys, I've had enough. That's it. 11.24 to go in somebody's playoff season. JT up by four. Longview's taking a 21-7 lead. Carpio kicks off. Burke will field at the 10. Looks for the wall, 15 bounces inside the wall, 25, out close to the 30, keeps on going, 32, 33 yard line. Very nice tough return by Josh Burke. And the Lee Band, we haven't heard, that's the song that they played the last several years when things were on the line. And we'll see if the offense responds at the 33 yard line. Well now they need a drive that's gonna result in points. They had a marvelous drive going there in the middle of the third quarter that took four and a half minutes and went 11 plays but they were stopped on four downs. Now they need to convert on this drive to retake the lead. They had such a pretty drive going. Yep. You're right, you're right. First down and 10, Lee at their 33 yard line, offset eye, tight end near side. Jason Williams tries to bounce it outside and will get maybe a foot. Outside the 33, knocked down at the 34, and a Greg Green, the safety, along with 36, Marquis Wadley. 79 tackles to lead the team this year, entering this game. And only a yard, it's second down and nine. Well, when you look at the quarters too, of course, Mesquite dominated the first, Lee dominated the second, Mesquite dominated the third. Now, there's plenty of time for Lee to do the same once again as they did in the second and retake some momentum. Second down and nine, offset eye with Mitchell and Williams. From the 34-yard line, Preston Hill, play action pass, steps up in the pocket over the middle, Amy first down at the 45. Here comes a flag down at the end of the play from the sideline official here on the Mesquite side. I wonder if this could be an illegal man downfield. The pass was caught by Amy at the 45 yard line. There are flags everywhere. And the referee will come to the near side. This is Eddie Eberhardt, 21 yard completion down to the Mesquite 44 yard line. And now we'll check the flag from the Dallas chapter. Sideline warning against Mesquite. That just makes him look better tonight. First down, Lee at the 44, and there's that big target. Boy, you'd love to see Jacob Amy get downfield, and he did. <laughs> yeah, that's a, a great bit of move and a great uh, route run, too, by Amy as he cut right in, inside of the uh, defense downfield, which was a zone played by Mesquite. And the thing about Jacob Amy, some poor cornerback out there goes, my God, I've got to tackle him. He's huge. <laughs> First down. Preston, play action pass to Williams. Steps up in the pocket, now in trouble. Tries to get to the sideline. Now wants to... Well, he's got to get down. He's sacked at the 48-yard line. Three maroon jerseys were there. K.K. Francis, they lost four. So you get a big play, then you lose four. Mesquite's defense that time did not think at all about any play-action pass. Well, Second that, down and 14. Yeah, David, with that MCL injury still bothering Preston, he just doesn't have the confidence to take off upfield. He would have had he not been injured, picked up a nice big gain, but he just was unable to cut back upfield. One of the key ingredients of this particular offense for the last several years has been the quarterback bootleg on two or three occasions early on to send the message and of course that's been out the window with Preston's knee injury. Second down he lost five. Amy in motion at the 47 yard line. Preston back to throw play action. Screen pass Williams 45 first down if he gets through he did 40. He may score. Here comes a flag. It's coming back. Touchdown Lee but a flag at the 40 yard line right at the feet of Marcus Jackson from the side judge in the Mesquite sideline and this one's coming all the way back and they'll lose yardage out of it holding Andrew Bailey or Marcus Jackson right at the point of where he broke the tackle at the Mesquite 40 yard line. So they'll have to do it again. Well, they overcome adversity a few times earlier in the ball game. They're going to have to do so once again as yet another penalty has been thrown against the Lee offense. Back to midfield, so not only did they lose a 49-yard yard touchdown on a perfectly executed screen pass, but they lose another two yards from the holding call. 
And that's what I was talking about a little bit ago when Mike Owens was jawing with the officials here in the Dallas chapter. It's not going to make a difference. Second down and 16, Lee, at the 50 at the midfield marker. That could not have been set up any better than what it was. But the flag comes down. Preston Hill back to throw in the pocket over the middle. Pass caught. Amy fumbles the football. Mesquite picks it up, and they're going to run with it at the 40. At the 45. At midfield. Still going inside Lee's territory to the 45-yard line. Tackled by Andrew Bailey. He throws it, Amy catches it, he got drilled and fumbled, and Mesquite runs it back inside the Lee 45-yard line. 24 yards on the reception and 24 yards on the return. Yeah, it was back and forth. Amy with a great catch, and it, three Mesquite defenders plop on him at the same time, and the ball pops loose, and Mesquite alertly picks it up, and now they're in business back in Lee territory. Well, this is getting down now. Talk about other games. You could talk about many things. If Mesquite sticks it in here, Randy, Not just with over. nine minutes left in the third in the game, this is it here. 8.57 to go. Skeeter's up by four with the football at the Lee 45-yard line, three-man front. Page runs the quarterback draw, tries to bounce outside and gets three yards down to the 41-yard line, a gain of four. Second down and six, and all Mesquite wants to do here is get three and four and five at a time, and here comes a player down for the Robert E. Lee Red Raider defense. Yeah, Mesquite just wants to milk the clock right now. And, of course, if they score, that's even better for them. Lee must get a stop pretty quickly and get the ball back to have plenty of time to get back down. Justin, no music. I'll just pick it up when the, when the play ends. Or the... Little flare out to the receiver, Hernandez, who gets down inside the Lee 45-yard line. A little nickel and dime down to the 38-yard line. A gain of three yards as Page throws a little flip pass. George Faber out of the game and being attended to by the training staff of Weldon Thompson. And Jess Roberts, the junior, 5'9", 185, in the game now for Lee at the linebacker position. No, George Faber now back on the field. Came out for the one play. Third and three. The lead defense needs a desperate stop right here. From the 38. Page. Shotgun over the middle. Man wide open. First down. Inside the lead 20. There was nobody there to stop him. The only reason he didn't score was because he fell down at the 16-yard line. And Kelly Page had all day 22 yards. Huge, huge, huge play right there. And they convert another third down. They had... Three conversion, two conversions of, of third downs on their last drive, which went 14 plays. They've converted three of their last four and a fourth down conversion as well. A touchdown here could be deadly for Robert E. Lee's chances of continuing a streak of winning or non-losing seasons and the playoffs. Page, quarterback draw at the 15, fumbles the football. And Lee's got it at the 17-yard line, Michael Wall, Jamie Lent. Terrific play by the lead defense to reach in there and swap the, swipe that ball away. And Michael Wall looking like a shortstop diving into second place. Based on the play, slides in, picks up the ball. Great job by the D. The offense still has hope. George Faber caused the fumble, and Michael Wall recovers. That is Michael's third fumble recovery. And now it turns the other way. 7.48 to go, and the lead defense with a massive, massive play after the big 33-yard reception. First down, Lee at their 18. Can they do something with it? Run the wing back reverse, Jamal Mitchell. Excuse me. Oh, Tucker just got blown up after he was stood up and lost four. Rory Malone, the senior, stand-up defensive, kind of an outside linebacker defensive end, was there, and... Boy, Nathan Tucker took a shot. Second down and 13. He just came right through. And uh, Tucker's, he's obviously wobbly. And Weldon Thompson, all of a sudden, that's two of the last three plays. He's had to come check out a lead player. That time, what happened is Nathan tried to fight for extra yards. God bless him. He was stood up. And somebody just ear -holed him at the 15-yard line. Touchdown sometime before this thing is over. And keep Mesquite at 24. Offset eye. They run play action. Preston has a man on the wheel route. That is Mitchell. He overshot him. He stopped his route. 
He stopped his route to try to catch the ball, and Preston throws it at the 35, and it's incomplete. If he keeps running, he probably catches that pass. Just a little too much air on it, as you mentioned, yeah. but Preston had someone right in his face. It's Rory Malone coming over from his defensive end spot, putting the pre pressure on Preston Hill right near the end zone, and he throws the ball off his back foot and uh, airs it out a little too much. Well, I think he aired it out too much. If, John, yeah. if Jamal continues to run the route, he runs through the pass but he stopped to try to make the safe catch, which is also something you like to see, but because of that, the timing was off. Here's a third and 13. Preston Hill back to throw in the pocket, sets up, going deep over the middle. Jonathan Williams, he can't get to it. He was open at the 45-yard line. He couldn't get to it, and Lee's going to have to punt the football back. He was running free in Mesquite territory. Well, Jonathan was turning to his right outside of the hash. Preston threw it back inside the hash marks, and Jonathan just could not get back to the pass. A little miscommunication on that one, costly once again. Well, you, you don't get many opportunities, and there you had one right there. And now the lead defense will be called upon yet again to try to get the ball back. Snap from Carlton, Rainey the punter. Good snap, no pressure, gets it off. Nice high punt. Hernandez at midfield, and that's where Mesquite will get great field position. And they have six minutes and 48 seconds to wear out with a four-point lead, a 35-yard punt by Rainey. So they got the big break on the fumble recovery by Michael Wall when Faber forced it loose, but the offense goes three and out. And that drive started with a three-yard loss in the wingback reverse, which just hasn't been able to pop much. But well, with the exception of the one drive where Lee made it all the way down the field tonight, and kept the ball for nearly five minutes. They've not had the ball more than two minutes on any drive whatsoever, so their defense has been placed on the field a lot. 6.48 to go in somebody's playoff hopes. Kelly Page runs the quarterback option to the, uh, or actually just a draw play. Adrian Beard knocks him down after a gain of a yard. Now remember, Lee, Lee took a timeout on that huge fourth down, down inside the Mesquite 15 yard line, so they only have two timeouts remaining. Six and a half to go, clock runs, and Mesquite is at the Red Raider 48-yard line on second down and nine. Page is at 94 yards on 21 carries. Sneaky good, and only a sophomore. Second and nine, trip set near side. Shotgun Page at the lead 48, leading by four. Page throws the fade pattern. In, in coverage, caught first down at the 20, down to the 15. Quet Nicholson, the cornerback, he just throws it up. And the defender just couldn't turn around in time. And the pass was caught by Richards, who picks up the first down inside the lead 15-yard line and a gain of 33 yards. Well, he does a good job of finding the ball, and Quet never sees it. And a very subtle, slight push by the receiver really opens the, a bigger door for him to make the catch, and he does so. Nice execution from Page to his wideout. Lee's defense right here with under six minutes to go. They just got the turnover a minute ago, but the offense couldn't move it. Has to force nothing more than a field goal here. 5.40 to go. Two receivers split each direction at the left hash mark at the 14. Page, quarterback, back to throw, rolls to the near side pass. Caught at the 10 and drilled at the 10. What a nice catch. Robbins was drilled by Hyder, checked that Cuba, but he picked up four yards on a very, very well-thrown ball by Page. And Page is running for his life as the big man up front for Robert E. Lee, the sophomore after him, chasing him all the way back 15 yards behind the line of scrimmage is Mark Brotherton, but he's able to get the pass off. 250 yards, total offense, Mesquite from their quarterback alone. They take a timeout with 5.17 to go with a... Quarterback draw, Kelly Page on the outside, inside the 10, down close to the 5. And they say he was not knocked out of bounds. At the 450 mark, he was pushed out of bounds at the 5, but they say his knee went down first, which is a very smart play by Kelly Page, if in fact that's the case. And it's third down in the yard at the Lee 5. Well, the quarterback really does a great job of running the option. We've said it numerous times tonight. For a sophomore, he's very heady, very sharp, and he does a great job of getting near the first down yardage on that carry. At the five, third in the yard, Page will go in the shotgun with King. He's nearing 100 yards. He's over 150 yards throwing. Page, quarterback, draw at the five and has the first down at the four. And the clock will stop with 4-13. Michael Wall was there for the stop. 
and it comes down to this at the three yard line with 414 to go the Lee opportunities Mike Owen said David we're not really worried about the playoffs right now we're worried about trying to get the five and five well they have to win this one to get the four and five and right now their backs are against the wall well they've had not a lot go right here in the second half and Mesquite is really taking it to Robert E. Lee if you want to be quite honest and uh, they're about to earn a nice big lead that Lee may not have the time to overcome at the Lee four four minutes exactly Skeeters at the lead four-yard line. First and goal. Page in the quarterback, shotgun in the spread. Takes the snap from Matt Clayton. Runs the quarterback draw, bounces it inside, and will squeeze down to the three. Clock continues to run. Jacoby McKenzie makes the stop, but he got inside the three. It's second down the clock now. The ally of the Mesquite Skeeters. Well, there's no quit in the lead defense, although they're really, really tired. They've been out there for such a long time tonight. They're fighting for everything, and they knock Page down before he can just barely get back to the line of scrimmage. Second down at the lead three-yard line. They're in no rush at all. They just now started the clock. It's down to 15 on the play clock, 3.20 to go. Kelly Page will just take pretty much every snap and run into the offensive line and try to find a seam near the end zone. He has scored twice already. Page, shotgun, runs the quarterback draw, and will score. Touchdown, Mesquite. Three minutes and one second left in the game and what could be left in the hopes of the Lee Red Raiders. Kelly Page has been the star of this game. Yeah, David, he, he really just finds a hole to get behind his big offensive line, surges forward, turns his feet, and that is his fourth score fourth of the touchdown. evening wow. for Kelly Page. He has over 250 yards in total offense in this game tonight, and he is only a sophomore and he's been the difference in this game, along with a few other weird, quirky things that have occurred. Here's the extra point by Carbio. Carpio is good, and our score with 3.01 to go, Mesquite 30. This game was 20 to 10 Lee, and they had the ball to start the second half, but Mesquite had two series before Lee ran a snap. It's 31-20 Mesquite back after this. Skeeters, seven plays, 49 yards in 337. And Kelly Page has four touchdowns on the run tonight for the Skeeters. The sophomore at 6'2", 175, came into the game. He had rushed for five touchdowns on the season. He has four in this game. He had 532 yards rushing. He's just over 100 yards. He missed a game or two. As you mentioned, Randy, to start the district against Longview when they were drilled, it wouldn't have mattered. But he's one to kind of look forward to next year. And I'm, I've got to be honest with you, just kind of sitting there watching this, the way halftime was, it looked like Lee was going to be able to pretty much name their score in the second half. Although with this season, you really haven't been able to take anything for granted. And it just all started from the opening kickoff that hit the ground and just bounced around and Mesquite recovered. And from that point on, it's just been... It's just been unbelievable. And that's kind of been the story of not being able to take advantage of uh, certain opportunities this year. The lead drive that got down inside the 20 on fourth down and two. Jason Williams on third down at about four is about to break into the secondary, runs into the back of an offensive lineman, comes up just short of a first down, and, and then the screen pass that, that was uh, didn't work. Screen pass that was as pretty as you can get. You can't find an NFL team that runs a screen pass better than they did for the 49-yard touchdown, and it calls back because of, comes back because of a holding call. The kicking game tonight, the long return to start the first half, and the onside, well, was not supposed to be, but a fumble on the on, uh, opening kickoff of the second half. Really, that's just a really tough way to start any half. Regardless of the score, here comes Carpio from his 40. And a very deep kick. Burke at the 5'10", 15, 20, runs into a player at the 25, and that's where he'll go down with 2.55. Clock continues to run the 2.54 on the clock, and Lee needs something big and long in a hurry. Quickly, too. Not once, but twice. Longview has beaten North Mesquite by a final score of 21 to 14. That is a final. Longview 21, North Mesquite 14. JT was leading Rockwall 20 to 16. Justin, is that game still in the fourth quarter? It is 20 to 16. And John Tyler trailed in that game at one point by nine. Cruz Fry, a part of the triple set far side. Lee needs big chunks and they need him now. 
Back to throw. Preston Hill in the shotgun. Steps up in the pocket. Wants to throw it. Jacob Amy. Pass dropped at midfield. Had it at the 50. Had to kind of turn his body around. That thing could have been intercepted because the safety green was there. But he turned the wrong direction. Gave Jacob a chance. Pressure from Rory Malone. We've mentioned him a bunch tonight at second down. Preston does keep his poise there. But he just shoots, shoots it a little high. Even for the big man. 30 yards downfield to grab onto and uh, just the execution now and the timing is just not there and Lee looks Lee looks really tired. At the 24 yard line, Hill in the shotgun with Williams the up back, triple set far side. Marcus Jackson is near side from left hash mark. Preston Hill steps up, pass tipped away. Very nice job by Hernandez, and that ball could have been picked off. Intended for Amy at the 40-yard line. They had Cruz Fry in the seam deep, but the reason he was open because the safety moved on the out pattern to Amy. It's third and 10, 2.41 to go. And Lee only has four out, wide outs or running backs going out in the pattern. There are eight defenders back deep for Mesquite as they're anticipating every little move that Lee can make down the field throwing the ball. 20. 2.41 to go, 31 to 20. Mesquite has scored 21 unanswered points in the second half. Four receivers set. Preston Hill shotgun takes the snap from Bailey. Back to throw. Here comes backside pressure. Rolls to his right. Throws it deep. Cruz Fry dropped it at the 47. Almost had it. Defended by 42, or was that 25, Jamarte Jackson? And Lee here probably has to go for it on fourth down with 2.33 to go in the game, down by 11. Right, bring it on the punt team, David. At the 24-yard line, Sean Rainey with 2.33 to go, 31 to 20, and Mesquite will keep their playoff hopes alive. And now all of a sudden, do you know what happens? JT has just scored again against Mesquite Horn, or against, uh, against Rockwell, 26 to 16, and Rainey will punt it. Nobody back deep for Mesquite. They weren't expecting the punt. It hits at the 40, down to the 35, 30, down to the 26-yard line, and that is where it will end with 2.23 to go. 31-20 Mesquite. We're back in 30 seconds on News Talk 600 KTBB. Mesquite has to just run out the clock at 2.21 left, and their playoff hopes, by the way, appear to be alive. Here's a run up the middle for about four or five. Outside the 30-yard line to the 32 for a gain of five yards. From the running back, that was King out to the 31. Second down and five. And it's now under two minutes to go. Because John Tyler with seven minutes left in their game with Rockwall leads Rockwall 26 to 16. That would have kept Lee alive, but that's not the factor right now. It keeps Mesquite alive. They play Rockwall next week. Mesquite needs to beat Rockwall and hope that Mesquite Horn beats Robert E. Lee or that, that Lee beats Mesquite Horn for Mesquite to get in the playoffs. Here's the draw play to King, breaks a tackle, and then stuff. Nice job defensively. Got about two or three outside the 33-yard line. A timeout lead. They've got one remaining with a minute 32 to go in the game. Two. Not only does this game hurt, I'm sure, if you're Mike Owens' staff and players, but it's going to hurt twice as much Jamie Lynn if they figure out what happened with Rockwall tonight. Yeah, you would think they would be extra disappointed about that. You knew they had to take care of their own business, and Lee hasn't been able to do that tonight. Here's a run out to the 35-yard line, and very close. He got a great mark at the 35, and this will be another timeout. This brings up fourth down and a yard for the Skeeters right at the 35-yard line. And Lee had the chance, what looked like the game-leading play on the 49-yard screen pass to Jason Williams that was called back on a holding call. Got back deep to field the punt will be Marcus Jackson for Robert E. Lee. Steve Halpin, the head coach of the Skeeters, around his punt team. Next week... John Tyler plays at Longview in what now appears to be 9-0 against 8-1 for the outright district championship. And Eddie Carpio is in the game, who's the kicker, who is not the punter, but he's the guy that's going to come in here to a, uh, what appears to be punt the football. Ten yards deep. Takes the snap, punts it, end over end. Hits at the 40. Marcus tip. has got to pick it up. 
the ball and the clock continue to roll down to the 115 mark, 114, 112. And Matt Uzel got very close to blocking that punt and may have gotten a piece of it. Yeah, got his fingertips on it, David, but just not enough to uh, knock it back in the other direction. So now with a minute 12 to go, and Lee will have no timeouts remaining here, down by 11. In 1996, when Mike Owens' first team was 3-7, and seven, Randy, there were no expectations for that team. He took over for Biff Peterson, and the Lee program had really struggled. They had not had a winning season since 1991. They made the playoffs in 93 with a losing season. And it really was at rock bottom. That was expected at 3-7. and seven. This has obviously been a very shocking turn of developments. It's a lot of weird things have happened this year, no question. Preston Hill back to throw. Wants to throw it over the middle. Pass caught at the 31-yard line and close to a first down. Stops the clock with a minute four to go to Marcus Jackson. Now they'll have to set up and spike it and try to see what they can get out of it, a gain of 10. Yeah, you mentioned that too, David. Of course, they were winless in district as well. That's that first season that Owens was there. Boy, they, they don't even set the clock. They just keep it going. Preston Hill back to throw in the pocket. Runs to the sideline. Throws past Cott. Cruz Fry got to get out of bounds, and he does at the 50-yard line. Gain of about 18 yards. Give him 19 with 48 seconds to go. Great job by Preston as he rolls away from uh, the pressure and finds his receiver coming back to him. Nice play on both ends. Yep for uh, both Preston and also the young man on the wide receiver Cruz catch. Fry Bruce made Fry. the catch, and what he did, he tried to do a little jab step to see if he can get the defensive back to commit and maybe get around him. When he realized he couldn't do it, he went straight to the midfield marker. 48 seconds to go, shotgun Preston Hill. He tells Jason Williams to get in the slot with triple set near side right hash mark. Lead down by 11, 31-20. Preston wants to throw it over the middle pass, incomplete on the far side to Cruz Fry. It's second down and 10, and that was the best thing that could happen right there because a catch right there only keeps the clock going. Yeah. And here's where you just got to throw it up and hope you get a big tip pass or you, you get a guy that gets behind the defensive back, and that's the only way right here you can get something in a hurry. Yeah, because Mesquite only has three men on the down line, and that means they have eight in coverage. And uh, when you figure Lee will have four or five out wide, that gives the advantage to the defense. We appreciate all of the sponsors of Lee football throughout the year. We've got one more broadcast next week against Mesquite Horn. Lee with four receivers, two on each side at the 49-yard line. Second down and 10. Preston sets up in the pocket, pass caught, sideline. Oh, he didn't get out of bounds. Williams reaches for out of bounds yardage, and he got it. Got about 10 yards, clock at 33 seconds now. And at the 41-yard line, close to another first down it is, and the clock stops. Well, he tried to do the same thing that Fry did, except he spun back inside, and he almost didn't make it, uh, but he did. He was successful to stop the clock, fortunately. For he Lee. got the first down, and he got the outside big white stretch for the first down and out of bounds. 33 seconds to go. Got to go deep here pretty soon to have any chance of an onside kick miracle, but right now Lee's just trying to get some more points. Preston Hill in the shotgun. Look how many players back deep in the secondary. Preston pass almost intercepted. Wow. Marquise Wadley was there, and he would have had seven. Intended for Jason Williams on the sideline route, and it's second down and 10 with 28 seconds to go. Congratulations again to Longview and John Tyler, Randy. And now you just wonder what happens next week between Garland, I mean, excuse me, Rockwall, Mesquite, and Mesquite Horn. That'll be pretty interesting if Lee can beat Horn and uh, Rockwall, Mesquite play over at Rockwall. That'll, that'll be an entertaining game as Second well. Second down and 10. Shotgun, five receivers. Three one way, two to the near side. Preston Hill in the shotgun. Steps up in the pocket over the middle. Pass tipped in the air, incomplete. Would have been short of a first down intended for Cruz Fry, and it's third down and 10 with 21 seconds to go. The state championship in 2000, the next year did not make the playoffs. Longview in 97 played for the state championship, next year did not make the playoffs, and Lee about to join that list in a list you don't want to be a part of. Here's Marcus Jackson. Oh, he stretches for the out-of-bounds marker, and they said he didn't get there, which doesn't surprise me. And he says to Preston Hill, he did not get out of bounds, and that's going to do it. And here comes a flag down at the end of the play. And I think Preston may have had a little bit of something to say to the official after a gain of eight yards. And it came on the sideline, the Mesquite sideline, and I think Preston with some frustration. Oh, 
unsportsmanlike penalty he said against the defense I think he meant against the offense Preston Hill and the Lee football team will now line up at midfield and the Mesquite Skeeters have won this game 31 to 20